All right, so can we use the logic dart to see what the Z80 is thinking? Or is it actually running correctly? Okay, so right now I have probes um, channel 1, channel 2 hooked up to address line 0 and 1. And I have it free running here. Just hit uh, shift continuous, so it's continually displaying these two traces. It's running right now in this uh, compare mode. And you can see that the, uh, let me just do a single, you can see that the two look, look like they're changing and they look like they're changing in an okay way. They might be counting here, one, 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 zero, zero, zero. You know, they, they look like they might be operating correctly. Um, so let's look at a couple other lines. Uh, so down at the bottom here, we have memory memory request and I/O request. So let's look at uh, let's look at memory request and I/O request. Let's do a single one of those. Um, so here's um, here's memory request. So lots of those. I don't see any I/O requests. So it looks like it's just doing a bunch of memory things. Um, but let's see if we can catch it do an I.O. fetch. Um, so we can set up triggering. We can say that we want to look at a falling edge. So right now the um, I.O. request is a, is a not true, so we're high. We want to look at a falling edge. So we'll do edge triggering on channel 2, and we'll do a falling edge, and we'll do a single. And there we go. We've caught an I.O. request and um, I can zoom in a bit um, you can see that we have uh, memory fetches happening and then memory fetches stop and then there's an I.O. request so those are those are like we're reading and writing from memory and then we're reading and writing from an I.O. device that's what we're doing here so the only I.O. device that we have on here is the UART so we're going along in memory, we're, we're, we're doing things in memory, and then we go grab something from the UART, and then we do some memory things, and then we grab something from the UART. So let's, uh, let's zoom out a bit, so let's see how far we can, we can zoom out, take us another single shot here. So you can see that we have, um, oops, we have like these doubles, we have like a request request then a whole bunch of thinking and then a request request a whole bunch of thinking so it seems to be just cycling in some loop and doing these IO fetches all the time um, so is it waiting for a keyboard entry you know could be because um, that's the way the program would run it would boot up into tiny basic and then would just sit there and wait for the user to type something so let's see if we can't see how this thing behaves um, on power up. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold down the reset button. I'm going to hit single and then I'm going to let up the reset button. And you can see we've got some interesting things going on. Let's zoom out a bit more. Do it again. There we go. So it starts out with no uh, uh, reset conditions and so nothing nothing is happening in, in memory. And then suddenly we're starting to get a bunch of uh, much of memory fetches. Okay, so let's zoom over uh, to the beginning here. Here we go. So this is where the reset falls, and then it's starting to think. So it's definitely doing something in here. It's fetching a bunch of program. It's 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 thinking. It's doing something, and then suddenly we have a memory. I mean an I.O. request. So something that's doing to I.O. We'll zoom all out. You can see that we're doing all of these I.O. things for quite a while. So, you know, one, two, three. So we're, we're doing a bunch of I.O. requests. And we do that for quite some time. And then nothing. So you can imagine that when this thing powers up, what does it want to do? It wants to initialize things. It's going to go out and it's going to write to the registers in the UART and set them up. So that's probably what it's doing here. It's setting up the UART, and then it says, okay, I'm done setting up the UART. Now I'm going to go 
do the rest of the stuff, which is probably, you know, get ready for other things. And then uh, it starts doing this double reads, read, 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 read. Um, so just with this one little screenshot, uh, I think we can kind of see that the program is kind of trying to operate correctly. Um, so what does that mean? Um, it means that the program's trying to do the right thing and it's either not getting the data it needs from the UART or the, the UART is dumb. The UART is deaf. Um, so if the UART is damaged, uh, it could exhibit this symptom. It could be that it's just... Uh, it's set up for hardware sh handshaking. I don't. I don't know that. Maybe it's waiting for a ready, to, a clear to send or ready to send uh, signal. Uh, that could be. Um, but certainly, uh, the program seems to be operating correctly. Of course, if you're trying to troubleshoot things, it's always nice to have one that you know works and one that doesn't work, and then you can compare waveforms between one and the other. In fact, we can do that. We can do a save do a save in location one and now this waveform has been saved in location one um, we could even zoom in on it uh, maybe we're interested in a particular thing that happens on startup and then we can save that in two um, so then we can do a um, recall one, which would be that, and a recall two, which would be that. So you can actually look to see which one of these you want to do. Cancel out of that. Um, so it's it's a fun little toy. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you can do this with a nice oscilloscope, um, but there's some things that's nice about this. Um, certainly, it fits on camera, um, so it's sort of nice for uh, for videoing. Um, I, I do like the status lights here. You know that something is flashing. Um, I did find out that you can set up the threshold uh, settings under system. Uh, there's this place here. It says 5 volt CMOS, 3.3 volt CMOS, ECHL. Uh, user 1, user 2, you can set up your own voltages. A TTL setting and then a 5 volt CMOS. And we have 5 volt CMOS here, so that's what I have the threshold set to right now. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool little device. Um, have I learned anything? Um, yeah, I'm going to have to get a new a new UART, um, just so I can swap one in and, in and out to see if they behave differently. Um, unfortunately, they're not the cheapest parts in the world. Um, and to get cheap parts, you have to get them China, and then they're dubious. I'll see how much um, Mauser or DigiKey wants for those parts. Maybe order one locally here.